Hi, and welcome along to the All Guns Blazing podcast, brought to you today by Profit Accumulator. Um, the link is in the description if you want to get involved with Profit Accumulator. Do that, and you have a chance to make yourself a little bit of extra cash in these tough times. We have DT in the building. We are back in the studio, and I can't tell you, it's good to be back. I remember the last time he was here. December. Remember that? December. Yeah, that was when you came and gave everybody COVID. Oh, don't start all that again. Walked in it here. nothing to do with me. Don't, look, I've been back here 30 seconds and you're starting already. As those guys pointed out, right? There's no pointing day, out. They're who your, was the person who was sick? They're your employees. They're going to back you. Who's the person who was sick? You. All week you were coughing <laughs> over everyone. <laughs> me? Who, who, when they was doing the watch along, a mystery pack of strepsils dropped out the back of their pocket? Why are they laughing in the background? <laughs> I can actually hear them all laughing. They think they're funny. <laughs> uh, but you know what, right? Listen, it, it, um, it's good to be back, man. And it's good mm. that everybody's in good health. And um, it's good that, you know, at the moment in the UK, we're starting to see better news with the with the vaccine rollout and stuff like that. And, and yeah. hopefully, hopefully, I was chatting to somebody at Arsenal a couple of days ago and they're very optimistic about getting back into stadiums and mm. games and stuff like that and yeah. it's yeah you know oh man i just can't nice, wait to just get back inside that so it's been nearly a year nearly a year would you believe that if somebody has said to you no nah. there'll be no football for a year you won't be able to for nah. fans like us who go every single game it's just nah. been unheard of uh, unprecedented but they they were saying as well you know we was talking about the the final game of the season that fans may be allowed back in mm. up to ten thousand. apparently the premier league are debating whether to actually cancel that and not allow it because they feel it might be an unfair advantage to whoever's playing at home on the final game. Oh, yeah. If you're playing for a Champions League spot, Europa League spot, relegation, whatever it might be, you would have a bit of an advantage with 10,000 yeah. of your fans in the stadium. And it's, But then my argument to that would be, what difference is it to a few months ago when they started to let one or 2,000 fans back in? Mm. Still fans. We had to go and play the North London Derby at Spurs Stadium with fans in there. Yeah. So, mm. I want to get back in the stadium as much as oh, possible, man. man. I, you, I, just, I miss it. I miss it. It might, it might make sense to just say, you know next what, season. start a next season. Mm. And, and I reckon they'll probably roll it out at first with just home yeah. fans. Maybe let them have the then, finals. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. There, there because there is talk neutral of, games, yeah. Yeah, they are talking about the FA Cup final as being possibly the, the tester for yeah. it. The one season we don't get to an FA Cup final. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you're going to have the Euros, isn't it? Where hopefully, you know, um, and fans... it might be in this country. Might like, be in this country. Solely. So it's just good. It, it's a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. The football might be coming back. And I think that we've all just had enough now of just uh, watching it from home and stuff like that. We want to get back in those stadiums. So it'd be brilliant. And mm. um, we, we did a, um AGB Extra a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. right? And we did a poll on that. Right, and I asked the question, um, and we spoke about this in the AGB extra about who should have the right back squat, squat arm um, spot, because it was a big debate. Cedric's come in; he's been playing a lot of times on the left hand side because Tierney was out. Mm -hmm. Came back in on the right um, at the weekend, had a good game, and me and you were talking about it, and you was quite adamant that you'd go Cedric on the right-hand side. For if, if it was from now till the end of the season, absolutely no doubt. person who should go in and start should be Cedric. We're going to do that as our matchup again today, right? I want to continue this on. As our matchup, Cedric or Hector Bellerin, who should be right back from now till the end of the season? There's still some important games coming up. There's them Europa League games and there's big games against Tottenham and that who in those type of games, is your starter <laughs> at right back. If the voting is it, close, then, and that's why you're continuing this, well, I'm, continu I'm, I'm I'm continuing this, right? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that at the moment, and you can go over to AFTV VIP, the link's in the description for the app, right? The voting at the moment, I've never seen voting like this ever for any subject. I can't remember anyway. Um, it's 96% say Cedric. Wow. 4% Hector Bellerin. I cannot believe that. 96%. Wow. Remembering that Hector Bellerin is a very popular guy at Arsenal. 96%. 
Jesus Christ. So let's keep That's that mad. going. I want to see if that changes after doing today. I mean, are That's... people being a bit too harsh on Hector Bellerin here? I don't think so. You know, I I've said this. I said it to you the other day. I said when you, when we done the extra show, you was giving down breakdowns of position strengths and everything else and trying to compare. Mm. And I said to you that there's not really anything Belli Bellerin can do that Cedric can't. He's even not got the pace anymore. You were saying that, yeah, you were saying even in pace, you think Cedric's quicker. I, I don't see quicker a difference. Quicker in short bursts, you were saying. I, I don't see a difference in him. I genuinely don't. 96%, I could not believe that. That's wow, staggering. so we'll keep that going. It is staggering. I thought it might be around about 65, 70, kind of. Because you always have that side of things where some people kind of go with a player because they like him. And it's, you know, like you said, mm. he's, he's a pop popular character, but... I've got another one for you, yeah? And another one on a throw out there in the comments as well. Granite Xhaka. Mm. He's played, I think you were saying to me even before we started this podcast, that he's played the last... 12 games. Last 12 games. All 90 full minutes. Full 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, come the end of the season, mm. would you keep or sell Granite Xhaka? I'll still keep him. There's a lot more around him that I would be selling. 100%. Because he, he's he's become a very important member of the team. Experience. I've, he's very experienced. I feel that like in games like this weekend's game, we'll talk about this a little later on, Burnley, mm. that those physical games, Granite Shaka, mm -hmm. you ain't bullying him. You ain't roughing him up. Mm. He's the type of guy that relishes those type of games. And he's been kind of reliable. And I'm wondering, have we finally found the right position for him in that he can kind of, he's sort of that deep lying player, drops in and helps out the defense, kind of drops in as inverted, sort of dropping in. And mm -hmm. and then if Partey's next to him in particular, yeah, he looks decent, but mm. I don't know. Do we still need much better than that? Do we still need to improve? I don't know, because he's become Mr. Reliable for mm -hmm. Mikel Arteta, hasn't he? Or am I, or am I say, you know, because there'll uh, be fans out there saying, oh, come on, he's had a couple of good games, but he's no. well. But I, 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 I personally think overall, when I look at him and many other players in the team, I think overall he's had a good season. I think you need to look at it objectively and in the centre midfield area, you kind of have around about four players for that position, for the two kind of areas. It's a bit like the centre back. You don't just have two centre backs, you have four. Most other positions on the pitch, whether it be wingers, you know, fullbacks, there's two, two to a position. So I look at it and think we're more than likely going to be getting rid of Guendouzi permanently. Mm. So there's a player gone. El Nenny for me is the one that needs to go permanently. So he's gone. Question marks over Joe Willock. Will he go permanently? There's another one gone. Will Danny Sabias be staying as a permanent? Would you keep him? Looking at it, I'm thinking Danny Sabias, Thomas Partey, Granite Xhaka, and I would like to see Basuma from Brighton. Those four, for me, as a, you know, as a four to rotate between and have as your midfield two, that's strong. For me, that's really good. When you look at it in the balance of things, say Sabias replaces El Nenny permanently, that's an upgrade for me. Granite Shaka, um, you know, stays on and Gwenduzi goes. So Gwenduzi Basuma will be the, you know, the change there. I think that's, I think that is an upgrade. Think yeah. about it. Basuma, Partey, Granite Shaka, Danny Sabias. Would you be unhappy with that four and two to choose from on a weekly basis? Or is it deep line players? Your, deep, your deeper sort of... Yeah, because you've got your 10. Your box to box like, and your... Partey's your box to box. Like Basuma's, not, you watch the way he plays for Brighton. It's got the engine and everything mm. else as well. So you've got a lot of variety in there. And I feel that between those four, that's a decent four. Mm. For, and I think if you're getting rid of El Nenny and you're getting rid of uh, Guendouzi, very talented, but major problems. We're even seeing at her for Berlin. Yeah. Like the manager's saying, you know, new managers come in and he's saying that it's like dealing with a, a boy that's going through puberty. Yeah. Yep, I saw that the other day and uh, 
you know, for a lot of Arsenal fans who've been moaning and groaning about Gwen Doozy going out again now, Mikel Arteta's starting to be vindicated on this. Not just him. Because, you know, you know. Not, uh, not just him. Have you seen what's going on at Schalke? Schalke, the bottom of the, the, bottom of the league, isn't it? Not just that, but there's a player revolt. With and Kalasinac who are two of the players? The they only players. just got there. They've only just got there. <laughs> and they've got, uh, they've got the manager sacked. And um, he's already come out and said that if he could have done things differently, he wouldn't have brought certain players in. And I'm like, yeah, you're finding out already. Mustafi's <laughs> came in. Kalasinac's came in. There's a player revolt. You know, Meza Ozil's gone to Fenerbahce. He's not pulling up trees. Mm. You know, their form's actually dipped since he's gone there. So it's like everything that Mikel's kind of just been saying from the beginning and what he wants to get rid of is kind of being vindicated. At the moment, yeah. At the moment. At the moment. And, and, and we're not talking about certain players at the moment. Every We're not talking about Ozil. No. We're not talking about, you know, and, and, you know, Cedric, to be fair as well, just going back to him, when he has filled in at left back, it's been way better than what Kalasinac yeah. was doing, wasn't oh, it? Oh, bar the Aston Villa game where he made that mistake. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a lot better than Kalasinac. Mm. A lot better. And I still think that he's one of the reasons why Pepe's playing the way that he is at the moment. And it's no coincidence, Pepe was playing on the left-hand side. He was excellent. And instantly everyone was going... Oh, the left-hand side, Pepe's, is his position. And then I was sitting there and thinking to myself, well, hold on a minute. Pepe predominantly played on the right-hand side at Lille. And he was superb. So how has the left-hand side all of a sudden became his favoured side when it wasn't mm. over there? And then obviously Pepe came, comes in. Um, I think it was the Man City game. And yes, it is Manchester City and everything. But with Bellerin behind him, he's so ineffective he's not doing anything mm. he's not wanting to create things or so again that argument oh, i should have gone on the left not the right but then in the last next, last game against leicester he has cedric behind him and all of a sudden the pepe that we've seen on the left is on the right so i don't think it's actually a left or right problem he can play left or right Mm. He just needs to have the right fullback. I, I, I also think, right, another position that Pepe could play, which he used to do a bit when he was at Lille as well, is sort of more central as well. Mm. Can now, do. For, you know, maybe in the future, he could, don't be surprised you see him get tried out as that sort of false number nine type, you Can know, be. because... And the thing about Pepe, he scores goals. Mm. I'm like, looking at his record the other day, he's pretty decent it since decent. he's coming. You know, I mean, you think to yourself, for a guy that ain't really, you know, torn up trees at Arsenal, he's got a decent assist and goal scoring record. He has. And I think you consider he doesn't start every game. Do you know what the the thing is with Pepe? He had a really good back end to the season under Mikel last year, and we were all like really hopeful going into this. And then obviously had his problems at the beginning. And like, do you remember when he got sent off against Leeds? We all sat there and said, "Could this be the making of Nicola Pepe? Mm. Will he go this way or that way?" Will this way? wake him up? And, and I has. think I think maybe the form of Saka. Uh, and players like that has kind of give him the kick up the backside to say, whoa, hold on a minute. It's woken I, I him need, up, man. And it, it's not just his offensive game that I'm impressed with. It's his defensive game. Mm. Like He's doing the dirty work. And he's doing the things that you don't normally... That's the manager, though. It is. That's the manager saying, yeah, if you don't do that, you don't play. It is. That's but what it, I think. But it shows that he's responsive to what the manager wants. Yeah. He's doing the job that's required of him to the point where, you know, we're arguing now over him starting games. And when he's not mm. playing, we're going, oh, Pepe's not playing. But it's become so difficult in certain areas now because you see in the form of Saka and and then plus we want Martinelli in and giving his opportunities mm. and do you drop a Bamiang Those on the left? Those are good problems, man. This is what problems, problems that we have. want to have. These are problems we want mm -hmm. to have. You know, I want to ask this question today. I know it's not until next week, mm -hmm. right? But it's the Europa League. We're up against Olympiacos again. Tough, right? Yep. Although I was happy with the draw, I have to admit. It wasn't the worst draw we could have got. But it's going to be tough. Mm. But if we could get through that, can we win the Europa League this season? Why not? I'm looking at the teams left in it, right? And, and the not? way it's fallen. So you've got the big guns left in it, Manchester United, but they're playing AC Milan. So it was another one of the big guns. Yeah. One of those two is gone. Is gone, right? Mm. Then you look at the other teams, Dynamo, Kiev and Villarreal. Remember, you know... Yeah, Villarreal. Good teams. They, 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 
there's this Una Emery <laughs> part of me in my head that's just thinking of a Villarreal Arsenal final, <laughs> and it's like, oh no, I think that will be up there with Tottenham mm. for me because of the Una whole Emery, Emery yeah. versus Arteta thing. It would just yeah. blow your. But mind. that's two. That's two good, decent teams. But yeah. you look on it and say, if you were up against them, you Arsenal would be the favourites. Mm-hmm. Ajax versus Young Boys. Ajax obviously favourite to go through there. Yeah. Um, even though Young Boys had a great win in the last round, but Ajax would be the favourites. Mm-hmm. Ajax, of course, got a lot of pedigree in European football. Would that would be difficult to get past them? Yeah. Um, Slavia Prague Rangers. Um, two good sides, but mm. come on, if you got those two, you're expecting yeah. to get past them. Yeah, I, I think tough Rang- games. Rangers but you're expecting one would to get be a past good them, one, but Rangers yep. concede goals. Granada versus Molde. Remember who everybody said, Molder, mm. look at how you're easy, Arsenal's group part. I think it was one of the few groups where the two teams that, you know, came top and runners up are still left in the competition yeah. is Arsenal's group. And Granada, what a result they had in the last round. Yeah, yeah. But if you get Molder, we destroyed them easily Over when we played them before. And yeah. Granada, you'd expect to, you know, mm-hmm. you'd expect to get past them. Yeah. Tottenham, Dinamo Zagreb. Um, obviously, Tottenham will be a tough... You'd expect Tottenham to get through that. Mm. Dinam is a grab a decent team, but you'd expect Tottenham to get through and Tottenham will be one of the favourites to mm. win it. And then Roma and Shakhtar Denex. That's a tough tie for Roma. Mm. Roma are a very good side. Mkhitaryan. Mkhitaryan. Shakhtar. Lots of European pedigree. So when I look at the, the teams that are left in it, right? You'd say Man United, Milan... Two very strong teams mm. that those one of them two are probably favourites to win it, right? You then look on it and you say Tottenham are one of the favourites. Mourinho, whether we hate him, whatever we hate him, Mourinho mm. with his, what he's done, he's got a great record in his competition. Mm-hmm. Roma or Shakhtar, those two as well. Mm. Arsenal are in that mix. Of course they are. Of the, the teams yeah. that are left in it, you probably say, oh, sorry, and I miss Ajax. You've got to have Ajax in there. Ajax have been to the final in recent years. Mm-hmm. Always strong in European competition. It's, but when you look at those teams there... It's anybody's competition at the end of the day. It's a chance. Anything can happen over two legs. And, you know, before the draw, there was a few things that did make me laugh because, look, we know what season we've had and everything, but I saw Manchester United fans in particular saying, one Arsenal, one Arsenal, one Arsenal. And I was just sitting there like... They want you? Arsenal. Yeah, I was sitting there like, where are you getting this energy from? Like, what makes you look and go, yeah, I want Arsenal? Because despite our, you know, failures this season and everything else, you still can't beat us. And you yeah, haven't no, well, beat we, us. We've, we played twice this season. We've beaten them once, drawn once. Yeah, and in three meetings between Solskjaer and Arteta, you haven't even scored a goal past us. Mm. So where's this energy come from? I don't get that Which kind of energy. Which shows that if we did get Man United somewhere, it's not It's, it's not the difficult. end of the world. It's difficult, it's tough. They've got s- excellent quality players. But it's not players. the end of the world. But we know that over two legs, if we if we look at it and we say, well, we played them twice a season mm. and they even scored a goal past us and we beaten them in one game, it wouldn't be something to fear. You yeah, don't yeah. want to get them early. You don't want to... Mm. It's difficult. United are United. It's a big game. It's hard. It's a tough game. They've got match winners in Rashford, Bruno Fernandes, mm. Cavani. We know that. I- but... <laughs> <laughs> you, it's, it's, it's not like you're saying, you know, we're out. We've got United. Yeah, yeah, you know I, what I mean? No, you, I know you, what you're you, saying. You're, you're, you're looking at it saying, tough game, but winnable. Do, do you know what I look at as well is that if all the teams that are expected to get through do get through, then you're going to get some real big quarterfinals. Mm. There's no way you can avoid them. If you do, you're lucky. You know, if we get through to the quarterfinals and, for example, we drew the winners of Grenada or Molda, I'd be buzzing. I'd be like, <laughs> yes. With no disrespect to either of them, but mm. I'd be like, thank you. Yeah. And then what you would hope for then is, for example, if Manchester United and Spurs got through, they play each other. Yeah. So one of them's got to go. Yeah. And then you would hope that Ajax, maybe Villarreal, if they both get through. So one yeah. of them's got to go. You're just hoping everyone knocks I think everyone anybody, down. I think anybody who gets through are going to want either of these games, right? So it's either going to be Dynamo Kiev, Kiev or Villarreal. 
You'd take that, wouldn't you? If, if you got through, I, you'd take one. That'd an, be tough, you know but what? you'd as take... As an Arsenal fan, I'm not so sure because of the Emery factor and his record in this competition. It's brilliant. It worries but me, apart from when we were in the final. I'd rather Dynamo Kiev or Villarreal than Man United. Yeah. What we hope Tottenham, is some Roma. of these, these predicted yeah. teams who right? should get through, don't get through. Slavia, Prague or Rangers, you'd take one of those two. Yeah, I'd take one of those two. Round, right? I'd be gutted if we got Rangers though and we can't go. Yeah, but listen, I'll take it. Yeah, right? I'll, I'll take it. Just And then obviously Granada, Molder, mm. you take that. What you don't want, I don't know, man. We're going to get Man United the, if we get through. The, the, the worst one to get for me is Tottenham. Mm. I, 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 I think Tottenham, I think Arsenal Tottenham do have a good chance of, of winning this. Um, Can you imagine a final against right. them? <laughs> Would In, you want that? I don't know if my heart could take it. I, <laughs> I honestly don't. It's Because it's, it's like, even at even a, even a Arsenal Man United like the, final, the, the, that's the bad as well. The most I've ever experienced is semi-finals yeah. with Spurs. And, and I, 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 I remember the semi-final when we played them at, um, at Old Trafford. Was it um, Villa Park? When, when? At Old Trafford. Old and Trafford. And 2-1. They went 1-0 yeah, yeah. ahead. And I swear, when they went 1-0 ahead, yeah, I was there. It's me and my brother was there actually at that game. I'm sure it's... I swear, I... I find it hard to watch the game. Yeah. Well, I was <laughs> I, I was at the two at Wembley. The first one with Paul Gascoigne when he smashed it into the top bins. Um, I think that was 91. Um, yeah. That one. And then two years later, lo and behold, we get him again in the semi-final. Back to Wembley. Revenge. Tony Adams. 10 mm. minutes to go. Back post. Bosh. In you go. So it's like mixed emotions for me in that respect. The hard and games are hard, hard. Because it's just... A European final. <laughs> a European final. All or final. nothing. As their documentary said. Oh, mate. Uh, and it'd be in Poland. Oh. And I'd be gutted that we can't... But could you imagine trying to get to Poland playing Spurs? Like... Yeah, a nightmare, man. It, I remember that game at Old Trafford. And all I remember was driving up to Manchester. And at each service station on the M6, they had Arsenal service stations yep, and yep. Spurs ones. Yep, I remember that. I so remember the, that. if you as an Arsenal fan trying to pull off in this one here and they were like, sorry, Spurs yep. fans only allowed in here. I'm running out of petrol. Don't care. <laughs> Break down on the hard shoulder and phone the AA. It's the, good, like, the, only, the only good thing about that final, right, is that they all went. <laughs> they were all gone by the time. So it didn't really kick off outside. Yeah. Because they were all gone. It's, but oh, that mate. semi-final, but, but can man, you, that'd Could be, you imagine? Like, mate, they would be putting on separate planes to try and... <laughs> Sports Option would have one hell of a time, wouldn't they? <laughs> They'd have, right, this is an Arsenal plane. <clears throat> this is a Spurs plane. You'd have Miles going, well, I'm going on the Arsenal plane. I ain't going on that Spurs plane. This. I wonder if, right, that was the final. Would we be allowed to go? Would they be what able to the do a situation in Poland? No, there's no way they'll change. Because look, we got Chelsea and they made us go to Baku. Yeah, but what... In light of COVID... I still don't think... And in light of the fact that, you know... Because this, it's a showpiece. The vaccin- you did the final to yeah, them, but, didn't you? Yeah, but the vaccination, this, you know... What, what, about saying, what about saying to me, you have it next year and, and play at Wembley? But I think you they've got, already located next season. you got two, two English... Season. Well, then the season after... Because, you got- no, because the, the, the argument would, that they would have with the, um, you know, the stadium in Poland is they would go, well, hold on, look at the two finalists. It's like... Arsenal Spurs, it's a showpiece. It's, yeah, but then if you if you're boys, next if, year, it might yeah, not but if be. You're, if you're the people who uh, who are running, it, you know, that pitched it and got it in Poland, the whole point of having an um, what city is it in? It's in um, oh, in Poland. Is it Gdansk? Um, I, think it's, I think it's Gdansk. I think it is. It is right? I'm not 100 percent sure. Right? The whole point of having that final there is not just for people to watch it on TV. It's for people to come from abroad and for you to showcase your city. Mm-hmm. When we were in Baku, remember how, you know, they, it was a nice, you know, the game weren't nice. The, <laughs> the stadium weren't nice, but the people, you could see they put their best- Stadium foot. was nice. The stadium, well, I didn't like it. It was, it was too, like, it, it, like, it was like soulless, a, it was man. a smaller version of Bayern Munich. Yeah, yeah. It was with a, a yeah, actually, oh, yeah, actually yeah, yeah, the stadium was, was nice. Outside looked nice, inside it was just a, soulless bowl you know what it is it's because of the occasion it felt soulless yeah. it didn't feel like a final do you remember we it didn't were feel like a final there? at all and we were like yeah just don't feel like a yeah, final yeah, dead, it just man. feels flat yeah. and this look we were saying this at nil nil yeah and before the game they just didn't feel didn't have that same vibe that vibe a final no. vibe about it no and it, but the city wasn't oh it's nice was nice and they put their best foot forward and the, ho- the whole point sometimes of these cities putting these things on 
is a it's like they want you to come back in the future they want you to say mm. oh you know what it was such a lovely city i'm gonna go back to you know baku in the future or something like that right but there'll be no fans there mm. so if they delayed it from then and said right you can have it two yeah, years down I, the line i get what you're saying and then you play it, I would that's if back. it was two I english would go back to baku two english teams and you've got you know, we, we've how the vaccinations and all that are going. No one's going to have to travel in. Yeah, I get People what you're that are here in the UK might be able to get to go to the game. Well, what, you know? I get what you're saying. Mm. But, you know, we're talking about UEFA and everything. And it's mm. easier said than done with them. But boy, I don't know if it, my heart. <laughs> it can't. My heart I couldn't take. It wouldn't be able to. Even United. I, I don't even know if I want them Listen, in the I struggle. Oh. I struggle doing watch alongs when Arsenal and Spurs play. Because it's live. It's, it and, is, it's, and it's tough. It's, it, it's like. It's so, so tough. Like, it's unlike any other game when you play Spurs. It's like, I can't explain it. When you go and you're at the game, it's unlike. I, I remember when we played them a couple of seasons ago and Aubameyang missed that last minute penalty. Oh, mate. And I swear I was on the floor for a couple of days. And mate. my son had to remind me, go, Dad, but you didn't lose, did you? Yeah, that, it felt like it. I said, oh, you know, you know the And then I said thing. to him, I go, nah. no. I said, we did lose. He goes, the, no. He goes, word, he goes the, no, no. He goes, it was a draw. Yeah. And I said, oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, but yeah, I can't, but yeah. listen, but man. It, the, I said, that game oh. had every emotion for me in the space of around about 60 seconds. And I was four seats away from the divide to the Spurs fans. So I was near it as well. Now, I was near them as well. Now, you remember we went 1 0 up, and it was Ramsey that scored, wasn't it? And I remember sitting there, and I was like, don't make eye contact with any of them. Don't let them realise it's you. Because once they realise I'm there, I'm just going to get it all game. So I'm like, Ramsey scored, celebrating, no problem at all. And I remember when Kane scored, and I think it was a penalty, weren't it? And it, if VAR was in operation, mm. it would have been offside. But someone clocked me and all I could hear then was, oh, DT, you're... <laughs> all this and that. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, don't look at them, don't look at them, don't look at them. And I remember when Bamian got the penalty... I like looked over at them and I'm like, don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. And they're just kind of like, they're, they're, they're like, oh, I don't want to look at him. <laughs> and I'm there going, if this goes in, if this goes in, you're going to have to stop me jumping over them fucking divides in a minute, man. I'm like, all the abuse I've just faced for the last 20 minutes. I said, I'm going to have this lot. And when he's missed it, and then they're going, man, it's like, oh, DD, what are you saying now? You fucking mother. I'm like, oh no. I was like, go. Oh. I came out of the ground. First time I nearly hit her. One of our own fans. <laughs> you know me, I normally keep my cool, keep my calm, all that. You've seen situations I've been in before, I yeah. keep my calm. I come out of the ground, right? I'm absolutely gutted. I remember this. I walk out, some guy comes up to me, you bet you're gonna make a load of money now, ain't you, Robbie, right? I, I go, what? I it's Miles and those guys there, that's grabbed me. They go, Robbie, cool. I go, what's this? I go, I go, bro. No, nah, seriously, you're already like, no. that felt so bad. It was awful. That feeling that, is- Someone, right, it's like somebody's given you a million pounds, opened up the case and said, yo, bro, that's yours, yeah? And then when you put your hand in it, they just went, like, <laughs> <it. laughs> I run off and laughed at you. Or, is, I, or it's like, like, I was gutted. It's like picking gutted. the lottery numbers and then realizing you ain't pull it on. Yeah. And they were the right ones. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I was gutted, man, uh, and I swear. And so I don't know if I'd want to play him in a fight. Yeah, final. I don't know if I could. I don't know that. because it's like it's either uncontrollable joy or hurt, mate. And that hurt will last the whole summer. It lasts longer than that. <laughs> it will last. I, I but we yeah. could, if we get Ooh. past Olympiakos, that's what we could. Face. That's what we need to worry about first, getting past them. Well, that's it. I know we, we have got way. Yeah, I know we're, we're like <laughs> we're already like yeah, we're in the final. We're going oh, Poland. Oh, 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 yes. Uh, listen, I'm saying if we can win it. Remember, I did start off by saying yeah, yeah, if yeah. we get past Olympiakos, that's going to be difficult because mm. I think we played ten times, won five times each. Mm. Right. I don't think everyone would be overly like worried about this game if it wasn't for last season's result to be honest I think that on the balance of the two games we should have won that tie like all ends mm. up we should have finished it out in in Greece um, but I feel that you know given that situation it's the reason why everyone's going oh tricky tie for Arsenal mm. there where on normal circumstances you'll go I'll take that because yeah. the last time we went out to Greece before last season we won 3-0 Olivier Giroud scored a hat-trick yeah you, you know what when I saw the uh, tie I weren't 
I'm happy with it because I'm like, you know what? If our players ain't fired up, mm. Bamiang, fired up. All those guys who played in that game last year, if they're not fired up for that game, mm. and I think we're a better team than we were last year because, you know, when I look at the team last year, some of the players that played, there's a lot of the guys that have gone in it, mm. you know. Um, yeah. And I'm like, but like a guys like Aubameyang and that, they must be fired up for that. This is that, that this was hurt. That you know, and Mikel Arteta, revenge. Mikel Arteta must be fired up because that was his big setback. That was the one that like mm. every that was the first time since when he came in that fans started to say, "Oh, hold on a minute, is this the right guy?" That way, acceptable. But yeah, you know what I mean. That you know that what? was no, you know. I, I wouldn't put that result down to him. I'll put it down to the fact of wayward finishing and just poor Terror, finishing yeah, and was... and schoolboy defending. Same thing yeah, again. Yeah, we've been still seeing that though. I know. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you say <laughs> We've still seen both of those this we, season. We have sorted the defence out though, in, in many respects. Yes, there are School still Schoolboy defending, we've yes, still seen are. Villa. Yeah. City. I'm not saying, I'm that not denying City that. That City goal where Sterling jumps above. Yes, I'm not denying that. I'm saying it's better. And there better, is, but it's still there not. There is a clear change. It's improved, but it's still not. But you you've know. got to think it's improved with the tools he's got. You know, these are defenders mm. that... The likes of Gary Neville and that have already said they're they're unmanageable. You can't coach them. Mm. Listen, we got the game this weekend, of course, right? Um, and it's going to be really interesting because, of course, we've got and this is the month of um, March where there's lesser games than there was last month, mm -hmm. but the tough games. Yeah. So Burnley this weekend away. Yeah. Right. Burnley are fighting for their lives. They are in relegation trouble all of a sudden again. Big time with some of their recent results. They got smashed up by Tottenham last week, right? So we've got Burnley, Olympiacos, Spurs, Olympiacos. That's the month of March. Yeah. Then we go into international break. Mm -hmm. It could be a great month. Could it be could a be a horrible month, month right? <laughs> it could be a month that if we got through, that could give us so much momentum for the rest of the season. It could be a month where we're out of Europe and could suffer a defeat at Tottenham in that season. Are we so, playing Spurs on the 14th of March? I think it is, yeah. Mother's Day. Wow. Well, <laughs> oh. Season could be over again, right? <laughs> the season could have been over last month. It might be over again this month, right? We've got to get through it. Now, first of all, what I want to ask you, that game against Olympiacos is very, very, very important. <sighs> Massively. What team do we play against Burnley this week? Do we sacrifice... A lot of the main guys I've got. Um, we're going to go through the formation. I've got the app out here, AFTV oh. VIP. Bobby, I'm going to say it straight from, from, you know, the get go that I think we need to probably go with similar to what we did with Leicester. All right, let's run through. So in goal, you're keeping Leno in goal. Oh yeah, keep Leno in goal. Right, right back. Cedric. I keep him. Well, you saying no, no, that? No. So wouldn't he be more important no. then? Wouldn't he be more important then for the Europa League? Game? I don't think I, I, I. You can't risk the worry of, of injury to certain players, and I think that. But you're talking about rotating, aren't you? We're on about rotating, but some players you can't rotate because I. No, but you can rotate. I don't know because you can play no, better, and he ain't that bad. Come on, it, it takes a. When was his last good performance? It takes away from so much of our attacking threat. I'm All sorry. Right. But I, I would I would stick Cedric there. All right, left back then. <laughs> didn't no, think no, about I, this one, did you? Because no, Tierney, you ain't thought about it, are you? Because who's no, going no, no, to no, no, play at left back? No, then? I'm going to play Tierney <clears> because he's he's had a month off. He's had a week's rest what now. What if anything happens to him, man? Look. He's vital. I know he's vital, but Robbie, there, there's certain positions where I don't feel that we've got much of a choice in that situation. I feel that... There's been a week's rest, you which need is to play key. Cedric there. No, I I want Tierney to play because he's if Tierney had not had this month off and he's been playing week after week after week, this is a game where I go maybe he needs a bit of a break. But he's mm. just had a month off, nearly five weeks. All right. So I don't think that there's a greater risk to it in that respect. You could play him against Olympiacos if he gets in, injured. Seen, yeah, but that's the game I'd rather him play. No, really but I, you get what I'm trying to say. You can't... You can say that for every player. Then don't, 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 don't rotate nothing, then. Because no, that could be happen to everybody. But certain players, they're, they're in a position where I feel that some players need the rest. They okay. need it. 
Centre backs. Um, I would go with what we had at Leicester. David Luiz and Pablo Mari. Not keeping them back for the... I, I, I'd let them play. I thought that they'd done really well against Leicester. I've been really worried about Gabriel of late. Like, I think we forget that he's still young. Relatively young. And he's still going to mm. make mistakes and still learning. I just... I don't know what it is, but every time I watch Pablo Mari... Been a I bit just, rash. I just feel... Recently. I feel comfortable <clears throat> with Mari. I just feel mm. like he does the job. And you, there's never a moment where you go... Mm. You know, he won a race with Jamie Vardy as well. All right, midfield. Partey starts. Starts? Yeah, has to play now. He's, he's had a couple of appearances. Him, him injuries. Ah, oh, Robbie, man, he's not been... Look, he's just come back from he's an injury. Vital, he's vital. I know he's vital, but he's just come back from an injury. He needs minutes now. Yeah, he's, for like 15 minutes at the end or something. He's already had two 20 minutes. He's clearly fine. There's clearly no reoccurrence of the injury. He would have had a full week training. Game? Yes, but he was obviously brought back too soon. And what happened within the space of 20-odd minutes? It went. But what I'm saying is he's been back. He's travelled over to Greece, played over there against Benfica. No issues. Comes back from there a few days later, plays 20-odd minutes against Leicester. No issues. Has a full week in training. Now give him another 70-odd minutes ready for the Olympiacos game. All right. Who's the other midfielder in that two? I would be very tempted to bring Shaka out. But his engine's ridiculous, like we've already alluded to. But I would, he's probably one that I would maybe bring out, maybe put in a Danny Sobias. Sobias, sort of like he's holding then? Oh, no, actually, Partey. No, no, El Nenny. Not Sobias, sorry. Um, El Nen yeah, I think okay. El Nenny could be the one that sits. Okay. I, but I think Shaka will play. Right, they're three in front of that. Who's going to be on the, um, let's, let's go that right-hand side. Pepe. Left-hand side. Willian. <laughs> no, no, Willian now, eh? Oh! My guy. <laughs> My guy. My friend, you know. The man sent him back a reply. Hey, listen. Right? I knew, <laughs> I knew this was coming. Right? Now, another favourite has emerged. <laughs> yeah. Watch no more cussing of William because William sent him back a message saying thank you, bro. Because he, you, you said to William, you sent him a message saying well done, you had a good game. Yeah. And he sent you back a message saying thank you, bro. No, he said thank you, my friend. Thank you, my, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so now, all yeah. of a sudden, now play William. You know them. <laughs> you, listen, you watch, watch. I'm gonna come in with one of them wigs on as well. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to be Willian. He's like my guy now. And it's... Now, look, look, All right. I thought, look, I thought the pair of them, they deserved the opportunity to play this game because they were so good against Leicester. Yeah, they were true. the two best players on the pitch. And I feel... And, and Saka is so important to this team. And he's played so much football. And the fact that Mikel himself has said he's fatigued. Just wrap him up a little bit more. Okay. And, and get him ready for Olympiacos. Right, and Spurs. Then a number 10 position. Odegaard, because I think Smith rose out anyway. Yeah. Striker? Stick with Lacazette. Okay. So you've gone Leno, Cedric, David Luiz, Marion Tierney, mm -hmm. Partey El Nenny, Pepe, Odegaard, Willian, and Lacazette. That's your team to play Burnley this weekend. I would be a bit different. That's near enough the same team that we played against Leicester. It is similar. I, I would go Leno, Bellerin, Louise and Gabriel. Right? Because I'm keeping Mary for I'm keeping back Mary for the Europa League. Yeah. Yeah. I think to me he starts Europa League ahead of Gabriel. But uh, Gabriel is Burnley. And Gabriel that physicality and that that he's got, I think I get will work. It. I think it will work is, well um, in this game. Is Craig Wood playing? Is Chris it? Wood. Chris Wood, sorry. Craig Wood. Where did Craig um, Wood from? Chris <laughs> probably Wood. is Chris Wood. There's Barnes. They're all bastards, aren't they? They are hard <laughs> bastards, aren't they? Oh, mate, I've just realised it's Burnley away. Yeah, Burnley no, away, mate. The chip shop. <laughs> the chip shop. <laughs> <laughs> the best chip shop in Burnley. Uh, Come on, it is good there. It, it is a good chip it shop. It is a great chip shop. Then I play Cedric on the left. I'm keeping back Tierney, man. He's got Ooh. injury prone this season. And he, just like how you described Saka, 
I describe Tierney in the same bracket. He is absolutely essential. I want him going into that game fit. Then I'm going Xhaka and El Nini. Or maybe Xhaka and Ceballos. No one Partey. Of those two. No, Partey is important, man. That's a vital player for Olympiacos for me. He doesn't start. Oh, mate. Then I agree with you, Pepe, Odegaard, Willian, Lacazette. I'm happy with that. Oh, you're going with Willian as well? Oh, of course I'll go with Willian. Yeah, look. Listen, there. you can't have the guy can't have the game. We, it, but I'm going for a different reason than you. You're going for it because you're trying to friend him up, right? It's my I'm boy, man. I want his shirt. Right? <laughs> 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 I'm going from it from the point of view that when somebody's come in and they've had a brilliant game like what he's had, you can't drop him. You've mm. got to then say to him, yo, go out and do that again. Do it again. Go and do that again. So we can see he, it ain't a false door. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So mm. go and do that again. You were excellent. That guy's been lacking in confidence. Mm. We know he's not as bad as what we've seen this season. He's been terrible for the majority of it. He put in a, he came on, nice little cameo when he came on against Benfica, mm -hmm. set up a goal. The other day, two assists, played really, really well. Play him again against mm. Burnley. Mm. Pepe has to play. He's a goal threat. He's been playing well. Lacazette was brilliant. And I, I would play Lacazette anyway, regardless of what, because I just feel that Lacazette, again, against teams like Burnley, physical, yeah. hold up play is important. Odegaard, yeah, you've got no option, really, yeah. because um, Smith-Rowe probably be out. Do you know, do you know the worry with your team is the fact that I don't think you're going to utilise Pepe properly with Bellerin behind him? Yeah, maybe. That's my issue. Maybe there, we switch, switch Peller, um, Pepe over to the to the other side. Yeah, but then William will have a poor game and everyone will blame him. Listen, I, I, I just think, Tierney, we cannot afford that guy to get injured. He's... Look how important a player he is. Look at the, the, mm. the look at the goal against I get, um, I get Benfica. It. I know, I get it. That guy's got to play against Olympiacos, man. He's he's another one. He needs to be literally wrapped up in cotton wool I, because I, he's I, a, him, Partey, Saka. They need to be wrapped up in. Cotton I just wool. think that you can sometimes be too overprotective. Yeah, but I'm just looking at their injury records. Their history's I not get that. good. It's just the fact that Tierney's missed a month, so he hasn't played a lot of football. Yeah, but and the, we have and just you know, had a week. I tell you my other reasoning behind it as well, right? Is that. It's not just, it's, for me, I look on it, it's just, I want those guys probably, those three, so Tierney, Partey, Saka, to play the next three games straight. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Those yeah. three games are. So I want them to play the first Olympiacos, then I want them to play Tottenham, Tottenham. then Olympiacos yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've So got that's why, for me, why play them so they might have to play four? No, I mean, keep those guys out of this Burnley game. That team there should be good enough to beat Burnley. That team, and then you can always bring them on if it's going wrong. Mm. You can bring on, you know, Martinelli. You can bring on Aubameyang. You can bring, take off, you know, such and such, and bring Tierney on. Put Cedric on the right. Yeah, I mean, you can switch it if it's not happening. But for me, those players, them three in particular, mm. along with Aubameyang, they need to be playing three games straight if it's all going right. Yeah, because they're your three big players. They're your three game changers. Mm -hmm. Tierney's brought goals to his game now as well as his assists and crosses and his great you know defensive work he's brought goals to the game Saka we know what he can do assist goals Aubameyang as we know goal scoring um, and of course you know um, Partey drives the team forward I would have took Xhaka out but it's just because this guy Xhaka has got an incredible engine or play game after game but I would, my midfield pairings him and Partey I would take Xhaka out if Partey's starting yeah I, I, I don't want I, I, don't, I wouldn't start Partey in that game and then, you know what's the game if you're looking and saying to yourself right I want to protect my players what game would you look at say at the start of the season say right which game could my players get kicked up in roughed up in that, that maybe I but could I, get an injury but you say, oh burn but, me away <laughs> but you say that but two of the players you mentioned I feel can deal with that side of things which they is Partey can. and Tierney yeah but they're injury prone look at their look, look at their look, record Partey, this season Partey's not injury prone he's he has been had a lot of bad luck well, a he, Tierney I worry about in a sense of the injuries because he's got and a Partey. history of Partey, and Partey before Partey come here his injury yeah, no, 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 was no, mean nothing now I'm on about since he's been here I wouldn't say he's injury prone. I would say he's Since been Since he's unlucky. been at Arsenal, he's been injury prone. No, I say he's unlucky. He's had a lot of muscular injuries. Unluck but very, very minor ones. Yeah but, they're, they're, but, week, yeah, but that's weeks. injury prone. That, that's not, no, that's not injury that's, prone. He hasn't, been, he hasn't been kicked. I knew he hasn't you disagree about something today. No, but those are muscular injuries. It's not unlucky. No, he is unlucky. 
And he's well, trying he's... to... Yeah, did you get what? Injury prone is somebody that's got a consistent year-on-year -year record of injuries, like a Kieran Tierney. It can be the shoulder, it can be the hip, it can be the knee or the, the musc muscular injuries. There's variations of So why risk things. him then? You don't risk him in a game against because, Burnley. Because I look at it and I say that when you weigh up the amount of football he's played over the past... But the next five, three games weeks. after that, that's when he's going to play a lot of games. He's going to play Olympiacos, Tottenham, Olympiacos, free, high intensity, yeah, and he's just high energy, must and win games. And he's just games. nearly done that. When he come come back for the Benfica game, Rest went into him. the Leicester game. Put his feet up, man. Chill. No, no, I think he's so important to the team in the way we play, man. Put your feet up, Tierney, man. Man oh. can come in and cover. Put your feet up. Saka, chill out. Yeah? Bamiang, take a rest. Chill. Partey. Mm -hmm. Relax at home. Nah, we might relax at home, man. Well, maybe not at home, but relax. Nah, nah I'm starting to get, get a heated blanket. Nah, might need you for nah, the last 15 yeah, you minutes. You might need it in Burnley. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> I don't know what you guys think. Let us know. Um, We're going to run let, a poll. <laughs> let's, we're not going to run a poll. Give, I want your prediction, though, for the Burnley game. Oh. Last time I done a prediction was Leeds and we won 4 2, wasn't it? You got that right, didn't you? Mm. Come on in. <laughs> I'm just trying to get my power. You a headache? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to you for the last hour. <laughs> but, um, I would go with 3-1. 3-1. That's not bad. You know, I think I I, 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 I agree with that. Can't copy I agree me. with that. Nah, you're not allowed to copy me. No, I am. I think 3-1 as well. Who's team's com Arsenal team's confident. Who's going? Um, Lacazette. Go on, go um, go on. Pepe, two. I reckon... Two Willian assists. <laughs> I reckon... I, reckon I know you, Willian Hattrick now. No, Willian's going to score. <laughs> He's a hat-trick now from Willian. Willian's going to score. <laughs> Willian will score. <laughs> anyway, this is the All Guns Blazing podcast. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I would say I reckon Lacazette. I reckon, you know what, I'm going to go Odegaard, get a goal. Hmm. And Pepe. That's another guy as well. He's, you know, don't know how bad Smith Rowe is, but now yeah, we haven't heard, yeah. Odegaard's now become a very, very important player. Again, that we're going to have to keep fit. But then he's coming quite fresh. He's not really played a lot mm. this season. So that, that goes in his favour. But guys, yeah. um, it's been great to be back in the studio, man. Great to see you back yeah, in the flesh. Um, we're looking forward to the game at the weekend. Arsenal versus Burnley. It's an early one. Saturday, early kickoff. Another early kickoff. 12.30. I normally oh, I'm worried about those ones, mate. but after the Leicester game last week, Arsenal go, put in a similar performance to that, be on the front foot from the beginning, we can get the job done. Then it's on to that tough game against Olympiacos. And then it's Tottenham. Mm. Easy peasy week coming up, isn't it, right? Mm. <laughs> it, could, it could be... Uh, Life as an Arsenal fan. It could be a rough week. It could be a great week. Let's yeah. hope it's a great week. Thanks for listening to the podcast today. Don't forget, we are available on all the formats um, download it right now. Um, the link is in the description. Um, we also got a link in the description for Profit Accumulator. If you're interested in that, the link is in the description. Click on it and um, they will give you all the information. You have to be over 18. Don't forget. And we will be back next week with another All Guns Blazing podcast. <laughs>